Hello and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm excited to show you how to add motion blur into an image inside of Photoshop 2024. We're going to recreate these iconic train shots where the train appears to be moving at high speed while the subject is still. If you wanted to capture this effect in camera, you would need a tripod, a slow shutter speed and ideally an empty station as well. But not all of those things are always possible so here's how you can recreate that effect with just a single image and we're going to achieve it all inside of Photoshop. For this tutorial I'm going to be using this image of a man standing in front of a stationary train. I found this image on Unsplash so if you do want to follow along with me you can do so I'm going to leave a link in the description below. That's the intro out of the way let's not waste any more time and dive straight in. So start by opening up your file in Photoshop and the first thing we're going to do is we need to separate our subject from the background. To do this, first make a copy of your layer by pressing Command J or Control J on Windows. Then hit W on your keyboard to select your quick selection tool. With the quick selection tool, what you'll notice is in the top toolbar, there is a button which says select subject, click on that. Photoshop's AI should do a pretty good job here, as you can see with this example. And when we've selected our subject, we need to then create a layer mask by clicking on this icon in the bottom right hand side of the screen in the layers panel. So that's the first part of the tutorial, which is separating your subject from the background. What we need to do now is prepare the background to add the motion blur effect to it. So next we want to duplicate our background layer. With this new background layer selected, hover over the layer mask we created on the man, hold down command or control on windows and then click that layer mask. What that will do is it will make a selection of the man. Then the idea here is we're going to remove this man from the background image. We're going to use generative fill to completely fill that space. And in order for us to use the generative fill, we need to expand the mask. The reason being is we need to give enough of a sample selection for the generative fill to be effective. So how we're going to do that is we have our selection of the man within our background layer. We are then going to go up to select, select modify and then expand. And we're going to expand by 20 pixels just to give again the generative fill enough of a sample selection to work with. After that go down to the generative fill box, click into it. And don't type anything, just click generate. As you can see, this has done a fantastic job and you can choose the best variation over on the right hand side. I'm going to go with this one. Next, we need to merge everything together so that the background layer is one layer containing the generative fill layer that we just created and the layer underneath with the man removed. There is an easy way to do that. Simply select your top layer hide any of the other layers that you don't want to be included and then use the shortcut command option shift and E on Mac or control alt shift and E on Windows to create a new layer with everything included. What this does is this just compresses everything below it into one single layer. With our new background layer we want to make another copy by pressing command J then we're going to use the lasso tool the shortcut is L for this we're going to use this to select the area of the train that we want to add the motion blur to. I'm going to use the poly angle tool just because it will give me a nice straight edge and that's what we're working with. So simply just click over the areas that you want to be masked. When you're happy with your selection, add a layer mask to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a smart object. So right click the layer and then go down to convert to smart object. And the reason this is important is because it is a non-destructive way of editing. And I'll show you what that means in a minute. So now we have our selection, what we need to do is add our filter to it. Go to the top menu, select filter and then select blur and then we're going to use motion blur. A dialog box will pop up and from here we have the option to adjust two things, the angle and the distance. The angle is the direction of the motion blur. And in this case, I'm going to set mine to zero degrees because that is the natural direction that the train would be traveling in. And then for the distance, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two different options. So let's just say you are playing around with this and in this case we want to set it to the extreme which would be a distance of 2000 pixels. We're going to hit OK. And this does look cool but let's just say for a minute you want to change this and you want to reduce the effect. Here's how you could do that. Simply go down to the layers panel and where it says motion blur if you double click on this it will reopen the dialog box and you can make any edits or adjustments. So I'm going to reduce the distance down to 500 pixels to make it look a bit more natural so you can actually see the some of the detail of the train. And this is what I meant when I was talking about a non-destructive way of editing. So make sure if you're ever going to add any filters to your layers within Photoshop, convert them to a smart object first and that will give you the option and ability to go back and make any tweaks or edits at a later point. So yes, we've added the motion blur to the image, but this isn't perfect. There is still a lot wrong with this image. And I'm going to show you in the next part of the tutorial how to tidy this up and correct some of the mistakes that were made. How we're going to do this is we're going to hide some of our layers and we're going to select the original background layer. And then we're going to set that to 80% opacity. The quick way to do this is make sure you have the layer selected and then hit the 8 on your keyboard and that will reduce the opacity down to 80%. What this will do is it gives us a template to work from and we can see where the areas of the image haven't been masked correctly or maybe there are some areas of the mask that are bleeding into the image. So what we can do is use the brush tool, the shortcut is B on the keyboard and with white as our foreground colour. We're going to select the layer mask on the layer with the subject. Then we're going to go around the image very carefully and repaint all of the areas that have been missed out of the mask. I'm going to speed this up a little bit but I, I'm not going to do it too much because I've had some great feedback from people in the comments on previous tutorials that you would prefer it if I slowed these parts down so you can see what I'm doing. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly talk over this and why it's important to do as the process is pretty much the same throughout. If you want to use this image for anything commercially, maybe it's a client project, maybe it's even your personal project, good editing should really go unnoticed. And from a different point of view, they say design is in the detail. Well, that does apply to photography and photo manipulation as well. If someone was to scrutinize your image and noticed any of these areas that hadn't been covered in the mask, you could potentially lose credibility. If you come up against any areas where there is a transparent object on your subject, for example, these glasses, we know that glass is transparent. So what we need to do is instead of using the brush at 100% opacity, we need to reduce that down to about 50%. And what this will do is give the effect of the transparency of the glasses, but still maintain the integrity. And that's it. All I'm going to do is throw on some filters just to slightly tweak the highlights and the shadows of the image, make it a little bit more dynamic and dark. As you can see, here's a before and after. What we've done is we've taken a very standard and boring image and we've turned it into something very dynamic and visually engaging. This looks much better and we've done it all using Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave the video a thumbs up and comment below if you found this helpful. It really does help to support the channel and I love hearing from you guys. As always, have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.